I am giving ThreadUp another shot. So if you want to see what kind of stuff I'm sending into ThreadUp, as well as learn any tips and tricks that I've learned along the way when it comes to selling on ThreadUp, then stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body channels by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I'm a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, and Kitizen. And typically on this channel, I do thrift hauls, I do tips and tricks videos on how to make more money on Poshmark and eBay. But in today's video, we're gonna do something different and that's because I am giving ThreadUp another chance. I have tried sending stuff into ThreadUp before and having them sell stuff on their platform for me. I didn't have the best of luck, I feel like. I mean, I made some money. I probably made a total of like, two, three hundred dollars on ThreadUp, but that's after sending in a lot of stuff and that's after being pretty disappointed with a few things, including their ability to kind of like stay organized and, you know, I've had things that were worth a good amount of money get lost before. Um, I've had things be mislabeled before. Um, so, you know, there have been some things that didn't make for the best experience, but I wanted to give them another shot because there are a few people on Instagram and on YouTube who have been talking a lot about ThreadUp lately and how they are just killing the game when it comes to making money on ThreadUp. And so I feel like I've been doing a lot of research regarding how to make money on ThreadUp and I'm gonna share just some of those tips with you today. Um, I have this whole stack of stuff that I'm going to be sending into ThreadUp as well. And I thought I would make like a before video just so you can see what I'm sending in. And then maybe after a good amount of time has passed, I will do an after video and share with you what my payouts were for these items and things of that nature. So just to kind of back up a little bit and give you a little bit of um, insight as to where this stuff came from. While shelter in place was happening in my state, I reached out to a local consignment store and I let them know, hey, one, I know you guys are probably hurting because you can't open for people to come in and shop and that's obviously hurting your bottom line. And two, I know that in May, you guys typically do a birthday sale and that's where they take all of their stuff from the previous season and they rent out this big tent and they have this huge bag sale where basically, you know, you fill up a shopping bag for $25 and I let them know if there is a way that I could come in and possibly be like the only person in the building to shop, I would be willing to take a lot of stuff off of your hands um, if we're able to work out some sort of deal. And so we worked it out to where I could fill a big black garbage bag and they would charge me $50 for it. Some of those garbage bags I could fit more than 50 articles of clothing in. I've gone like, five times at this point, I think. The last time that I went, I got a mixture of clothes and shoes and I paid 80 cents per item and I got like 300 items at that point. Um, the time before that, I got like, I don't remember exactly how many items, I think it was like 350 or something, and I paid 86 cents per item, and that's typically how much I've been paying for everything. Shoes, I've been paying a little under $2 for, um, and that's like shoe specific hauls. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've been getting everything for really cheap, and I love you know shopping at this consignment store because They've already done the hard work of sifting through different things that people are wanting to make money off of and making sure that one, those things are on trend and two, that there aren't any flaws on those items. Obviously they miss things here and there. Some of the items do have, you know, little like rips or maybe a button's missing or there's a stain or something like that. But generally speaking, everything's in really great shape and I don't have to be the one to like really look at everything with a fine tooth comb. So the past few times that I've gone, I've gone directly to their storage unit and that's where they keep all of the stuff from the past season. And that is why I'm able to be in there by myself. They literally unlock it for me, I show up, and then when I'm done, I lock up, so I'm just in there by myself. I went once with a friend, I went once with my husband, but it's like the best kind of social distancing shopping you can do because nobody else is in there with me. Also, I apologize if you can hear, what is this called, mowing the lawn, someone's mowing the lawn outside, so you might hear that in the background. But. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I'm planning to send in to thread up. None of these, as far as I remember, are Lux items, so I'm just gonna do a regular thread up box, which means it's not expedited, and it does mean I have to pay $10.99 to get the stuff shipped back to me if they don't accept it. I'm totally fine with that. In the grand scheme of things, $11, not a huge deal. 
And right now ThreadUp is supposedly backed up pretty bad. They're saying it could take 10 to 12 weeks to process, you know, the boxes that they're getting in right now. Um, I've heard instances where it, people don't have to wait quite as long, but then in other cases, depending on where their box is going, it, it does take about 10 to 12 weeks. That's where you're going to see that there's a variety of seasons represented in the stuff that I'm sending in. I don't know if they're going to get it right before fall. I don't know if they're going to process it still in time to list some summer things. So I'm just sending a little bit of everything. I don't know off the top of my head if these are like great brands for thread up. I'm just trying them out again, based off of some of the videos and information that have come out on YouTube and Instagram from different people. People that I recommend following if you're interested in learning more about ThreadUp. On Instagram, I would definitely follow Krangle and I will have her Instagram down here. Um, on YouTube, I recommend watching Rebecca the Reseller and Vandy's Closet. They both have a lot of really informational videos about ThreadUp. Much more information than I can give you because like I said, I have a little bit of experience but not a whole lot. So. What I will do is I'm gonna show you the item and at the bottom, I'm gonna show you how much ThreadUp typically prices these kinds of articles of clothing for these brands for. And what I'm planning to do on ThreadUp is once they list everything, you can go in and change the prices. And I plan on changing the prices of everything to the max amount that I'm allowed to. So I believe that you're able to price up to 80% of what they're saying the listing price is for. And they kind of guesstimate for a lot of things. I think they have a blanket like, okay, if it's a Calvin Klein dress to say that the you know retail price is $89. And so what you can do is you can go in and change the price on each item. So that's what I plan on doing, which is why I will show you at the bottom here what I think I can max maximally, is it a word? But <laughs> Like what I think the maximum price for each item will be and what if it sells for that price, my payout could be. Now, people are always using coupons on ThreadUp, which I have to eat the cost of. Um, and you know, I will, after a certain amount of time, start dropping the prices on different items if they don't sell. So this is kind of like best case scenario, how much could my payout be per item? That doesn't mean that that's what I'm gonna get. So just keep that in mind, but I just wanted to be able to give you as much information as I could, even about pricing when it comes to ThreadUp. So let's get started. I'll show you what I'm sending in. I'll try to give a brief explanation as to why and why I don't want to sell it myself. This is an Ann Taylor dress. It is a size four. I have heard that Ann Taylor gets priced super high on Thread Up, and people make payouts of $30 plus. So I, you know, don't traditionally have a lot of luck selling Ann Taylor myself, so I thought that I would try that as well. Unfortunately, the materials tag has been ripped out, but it does feel like 100% silk. Um, it's a V-neck dress, and it has like this nice little um, ruching detail at the waist, and yeah, just a pretty floral print. Nothing like super exciting, but I'm hoping that one, they accept it and I'm hoping that they price it high and I make a good amount of money off of it. This is a top by Chico's. This consignment store has so much Chico's. And so the majority of it I'm sending in because I just want to see how they do. I kept some of it to sell myself as well, but I don't have a lot of luck selling Chico's, which is why I want to see if they have a little bit more luck than I do. This is a size zero, which isn't, you know, that big. Chico's does use vanity sizing. It's got this crazy like swirly print on it. I can't ex I can't imagine this would get priced that high. Um, I imagine my payout would be like $10 or something. But the best thing about ThreadUp, in my opinion, is that they do all of the work for you. They photograph it, they list it, um, they ship it out, they deal with customer service. So even though my payout for a lot of these things might be a little bit less than what I would get if I were to sell it on my own, it's a lot less money for a lot less work. So. For me, I'm thinking of it as a passive way to make some money, especially hopefully like in the fall when I start to get really busy with school, because if you didn't know, I am a full-time high school choir teacher. So when it gets really busy in the fall and I'm not able to devote as much time to my reselling business, I'm hoping that ThreadUp will pick up the slack for me as these items that I'm sending into them, you know, in the next few days, um, as they start to sell through my stuff, I'm hoping that they'll make money for me, if that makes sense. This is another Ann Taylor dress. I'm sure it's from the same person as that first one because it's also a size four. It is black. It's got the same kind of like, you know, ruching here or like this 
whatever in the center at the waistline, but it also has um, this crossover right here, just like a really pretty black dress. I'm hoping that they price it high. And um, oh, there is like some dust or dirt at the bottom. So I'll look through these again before I actually put it in the box to send it out because I wanna make sure that things look as flawless as possible. Um, oops, I don't know what that was. This I think is Chico's again, it's a size one. This is a little bit more substantial of a piece because it is like a jacket. It buttons up, it's got some crazy sequin action as you can see, um, a really bold black and white print on it. So I wanted to see, for example, like a Chico's jacket compared to that Chico's shirt, you know, if there's a difference and that way I can know in the future if it's just not worth it to send in Chico's shirts, but it is worth it to send in their jackets or their jeans or whatever. This is a coach bag. I'm gonna take out the stuffing that was inside. Um, it's just like a little coach bag, but I heard coach does insanely well on thread up. I have such a hard time moving coach on Poshmark and eBay, and that's why I wanted to try sending it into thread up. There is like a little mark on the back, but I'm just gonna take a wipe to it, and I think that that'll come off right away. But it's in really great condition. This is a pair of white pants. They look to be jeans. It's Chico's Platinum, size 0 0.5. I, and, and they're cropped too. Um, again, this place had so much Chico's. I paid an average price of 80 cents for everything. So even if I make, again, let's say $10 off of that, it's still well worth my time. Um, and yeah, another pair of Chico's. This is so slimming, 0 0.5. These are more of like a dress pant. Um, they're very stretchy. They're longer than the capris that I just showed you, but these would be really appropriate for like work or even just to wear to like a picnic or something. I personally hate wearing white bottoms because I immediately spill like spaghetti or kimchi or something crazy all over them. This is Lane Bryant. It's a size 22 tall. Lane Bryant is another brand that I heard does really well over on Thread Up. Lane Bryant is a plus size brand. I cannot get it to move on Poshmark. So I actually recently sent in some Lane Bryant. I marked them as not for sale in my Poshmark closet in the event that they don't take them or they don't sell. Um, but I'm hoping that those pieces will sell on Thread Up because I've had them in my Poshmark closet for you know, a very long time and they're not doing anything. Um, there is a little bit of a mark right here. Again, I'll see if I can get it out, but it's just a pair of black dress pants. So I have actually sent out now, since I decided I was gonna try Thread Up again, I've sent them like five boxes and you can send up to 30 pounds per box. So I have sent in like 150 pounds worth of clothes, a lot of it dress pants, because I have a hard time getting dress pants to move in my Poshmark closet and eBay store, and I wanna see how they do on Thread Up. So I've sent in brands like Loft, Ann Taylor, Banana Republic, White House Black Market, Lane Bryant, and I just wanna see if they can get them to move. This is a plus size skirt from Talbot's. It is new with tags. It was originally marked at $109. And so that's probably what they will price it for is $109 because they can see right here on the tag that that's what it was marked at. It's a size 16, so it's plus size, which is even better. And it's got this really pretty print of like flowers and a bird cage. Um, it's just a nice like A-line skirt. So we'll see how they do with that. This is another pair of Lane Bryant pants. This is a size, well shoot. Okay, this is a size 22 petite. There is a little bit of pilling, so I'll probably take a sweater shaver to it before I send it in just so it's like in the best shape possible because Thread Up doesn't really do anything. If there are like stains or pilling, they're not gonna take the time to sit there and like take a sweater shaver to it. They're just gonna send it back to you or you know, if you don't want things sent back to you, they're gonna put it in the rescue boxes. This also has some pilling in the crotch. So like I said, I just have to go through. Um, this is a pair of Banana Republic Martin Fit pants in a size too petite. They are brown, just dress pants. Um, if you are sending in dress pants, make sure that you are only sending in women's and not men because Thread Up does not sell men's clothes, which I think is kind of crazy. I think that if they did, they would make more money, but as of this moment, they only do women's and children's clothing. This is another pair of those fabulously slimming Chico size zero pants. They're like, um, I don't know, they fit kind of like a legging almost, like they're pretty tight, especially up on top. They might taper out a little bit at the bottom, but I think they're just supposed to like suck you in. 
I have had a little bit of luck selling the uh, like slimming jeans from Chico's on my own, but I don't know. This is a pair of Lane Bryant shorts in a size 22. They are um, like this green, army green color. I wanted to see how they did with shorts over there. Another pair of dress pants. This is by Banana Republic again. This is the trouser number 215 Martin Fit in a size two. It does look like it's made of wool. There seems to be some pilling on the inside. I might take the time to see if I can sweater shave it out, but honestly, I might not and just see if they take it. Um, we'll see. This is again, new with tags. These are loft. Um, and let's see, this is a size 12 petite. I'm gonna take off the sale price, but they were originally $79.50. And so that's most likely what they will price it at for the original price. But it's just a pair of, you know, gray dress pants. They're not like wide leg, but they're um, just, yeah, dress pants. I don't know, I don't know how else to explain them. This is a dress by Calvin Klein and it's a size four. I have a hard time selling Calvin Klein on Poshmark or eBay, just generally speaking about the brand. Um, it's a belted dress. There is an exposed zipper on the back and it's got this cool like tie dye print, which is in right now. It's sleeveless. And I feel like, you know, when you see Calvin Klein dresses at Macy's or something like that, they are, um, they retail for a good amount. So my hope is that, you know, they'll list the retail price as like over a hundred dollars. I mean, we'll see. This is Calvin Klein again. It's size two. This is a fancier dress. It's very interesting. Oh no, but I think I just found a pretty big flaw. Let's see. Yeah, I might try to stitch this down, but this came off. So without that, you can see it's a one shoulder dress and it's got this like, what is this called? Chiffon, I don't know. It's got this material up on top and then it's like this crinkly material all through the bottom. It's like a perfect, you know, cocktail dress, something like that. I just have to get this situation figured out. I might even just snip it, I don't know. But yeah, so once I get that figured out, that's gonna go into thread up. I think this is yet another, okay, no, this is Land's End. It's a size eight petite. It's just this teal dress. It's very like structured. It feels very substantial. Um, I'm sending it in because I wanna know how Land's End does. I kept a few Land's End pieces for myself to keep that were more in style with things that I have found to sell pretty well for me. Something like this, it's a little bit more formal. I don't see it selling well for me. So I'm gonna send it in to them and see what they can do with it. This little number is Ming Wang. It's a petite large. I just don't think this will sell for me. I don't know, like people don't wanna pay what this is worth on Poshmark or on um, eBay, but I'm hoping that they will pay for this brand on a place like ThreadUp. And I'm hoping that the retail price on this will be pretty high so that my payout is a little bit higher. This is Loft and it's actually Loft Factory or Loft Outlet. And you know that because it's got the two diamonds underneath. It's a size eight. So that means it's not as good as regular Loft, but I still thought it was pretty. And again, I just wanted to see what they would price this at. Um, I'm just experimenting and I feel like this is the best way to learn is by spending 80 cents on each item and then just seeing what they do with everything. Like even if I only make $10 or $5 on that dress, I've still profited and not done any work. So I'm okay with this gamble. This is Ralph Lauren Sport. It's a size small. It is a blue zip up jacket and um, I don't know, nothing more really to say about that. Ralph Lauren has so many different levels of its brand. You know, it's got like the black label, the purple label, the whatever, you know, there's all these different like color labels that are each kind of in its own little hierarchy. Um, Spore is not that high, but again, I just wanna see what they do. This is Chico's again, it's a size zero, and it is just this floral shirt with like a cowl neck. I don't see them pricing it that high, but we'll see. This is a dress. I wanna say it's Calvin Klein. It is Calvin Klein. It's a size 14, so 
that is you know considered plus size and it's this blue dress with like these big pockets on the front um very summery i don't know if they're gonna get this box in time to cater to people who are shopping for summer clothes but we'll see this is ll bean and it is a size women's extra small petite i did buy some ll bean to keep for myself as well this i just felt like i'd have a harder time moving so again i'm experimenting with different brands i want to see how they do with ll bean specifically with their jacket so that if i find any in the future i have something to reference as far as how they would price that this is a skirt by lane bryant and it is Lane Bryant factory or outlet, you can tell by the diamonds underneath. This is a size 16. It's just an A-line skirt. It's blue with like these black polka dot stripes kind of going up and down. This is from Talbot's, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yes, it's the Chatham ankle pant in a size 14 petite. I wanted to see how they did with Talbot's not like dress pants, because these are not dress pants, although I did some of them a lot of dress pants, but more of like a casual pant. I wanna see what the payout for something like this would be. And I thought those were really cute with like the floral print. This is a red blazer from Lane Bryant. It's a size 22. It's got kind of this rounded collar, not like super trendy. <laughs> um, it's got like a three fourths sleeve and big buttons up the front. Just wanting to see, one, will they accept stuff like this? And two, how are they going to price something like that? This is another kind of more summery dress. And this one, if I'm not mistaken, is new with tags. Yep. This is Michael by Michael Kors. It was originally $110. So that's probably what they're going to price it at. And it's just this sleeveless striped like tank dress. It has a belt. Um, just really easy, you know, perfect for... When you go to like the beach or something, perfect for vacation. Michael by Michael Kors is obviously not as desirable as just regular Michael Kors, but 80 cents, people. Let's not forget 80 cents. This is a sweater made of merino wool in a size small from Banana Republic. It's got this interesting neckline. The black is trying to wash me out. I don't know. I don't know if you can see that. It's very interesting. It's like a boat neck, but also like a mock neck. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just wool sweater. So Banana Republic, I have sent them a ton of like dress pants, even a few blazers. And I just wanted to get a feel for how they price their sweaters and how the sell through rate is on those. This is Talbot black cardigan in a size small petite. It has like this lurexy detail in it, which makes it, um, sorry, there's just like Hair or something on it um, which gives it that like shimmer that like glittery look and it also has these really cute buttons up on the front and then like this trim right here so I wanted to see how that did I imagine it would be a little bit harder for me to move myself on Poshmark this is funny because I actually have the same exact dress but in navy and red from Chaps listed in my Poshmark closet already. It's got this ruching right here, um, very slinky, and I thought it would be a fun experiment to send this into ThreadUp and then list one in my Poshmark closet and see which one takes longer to sell. Um, the one that's in my Poshmark closet has been there for a few months now at this point, so I don't know, it'll be interesting to see. Another Calvin Klein dress, this is a size six. It is sleeveless. It is like this really rich pink color or almost red, I don't know, reddish pink. Um, it's got this texture to the fabric. A lot of Calvin Klein dresses, as you can see. Um, there's this little thing here. I'm just gonna snip it off and no one will even know that it was there. Look at that, look at that. You can't even tell that it had kind of gotten a little whatever. I don't remember what that word is. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm going to be looking over all these garments one more time before I send them in just to make sure there are no like big flaws because although it's like near impossible, it would be wonderful if they just took everything and I didn't have to pay that $10 and 99 cents to get stuff shipped back to me, but we'll see. This is a dress by Calvin Klein. I'm really hoping they love Calvin Klein. It's a size eight. It's black and white, it is sleeveless, and it's got this interesting, what, what's happening here? What's happening, guys? Uh, 
I, okay, it goes like this, and then it ties. You can see like there's this tie at the neck to hold the front of the dress together. I don't, I don't even know. They'll figure it out. And then it's like knee length. Yeah, no, no, no. It's Calvin Klein. It was 80 cents. I was like, let's see if they'll take it and how much I can get for it. This is a jacket by White House Black Market in a size 14, which is a larger size. It's like a very structured blazer. Um, I thought it was actually really cute, but I personally have a hard time selling White House Black Market. I have a ton of it in my Poshmark closet and eBay store right now because I got a lot of it for free from a friend. It's just not moving. This is Ann Taylor. Um, it's a size 10 petite. It's a blazer in like this beige -ish tan color. I believe it's wool. Let's see. It is 39% wool and there's some other materials in there as well. So I wanted to see how Ann Taylor blazers did. I've heard that their dresses do really well. I haven't heard anything about their blazers. This is like a zip up sweater thing from White House Black Market. It's really interesting. You can see it's got this interesting texture on the front. Um, the rest of it is ribbed. It's like a moto zip. I just thought I would try it. Again, I don't have the best of luck with it, but maybe people look for it all the time over on ThreadUp. And the last thing I'm sending in is also White House Black Market. It's a size extra small, and it is this black open front. Ooh, there's like a fuzzy that just flew away. Black open front, kind of like waterfall um, cardigan. It's, I don't know, the lighting is making it so hard to see. There we go. So these are the items I'm gonna send in. A couple things about when I send, oh, wait, there's one more thing. This is a purse by the sack. <laughs> I don't really know much about the sack, but I have sent in a few pieces already and I will also be sending this one in. I don't think that it's really worth that much, but we'll just see because I don't really wanna list it myself. Okay. So a couple things about sending in stuff to thread up. First of all, you can use any kind of box that you want. You can email them and ask them to send you a shipping label or even like they have these big bags that you can put clothes in and send it back to thread up. And one beautiful thing about thread up is you don't have to pay for shipping when you're sending them stuff. If you ask them to send you a label though, or to send you a bag, it's gonna take a while. And the other option that I think makes more sense is you just go on the website and you say, I would like to ship you a box and they will send you a shipping label for free that you can then just put on whatever box you want and you just ship it to them and then you didn't have to wait for anything um, or anything like that. There are a couple options. You can send them a box right now and say that you just wanna donate all of it, like you don't even want a payout. I did not select that on anything because I do want to pay out. Um, you can ship it and say, you know, anything that you don't keep, I'm okay with you just getting rid of in whatever fashion you want. I didn't do that either. I decided to go with the third option, which is to say, hey, if there's stuff that you're not going to take, please send it back to me and I'll pay the $10.99 that it costs to send it back to me. Now, I've heard a couple things about this. I've heard that they tend to take more of your stuff if they know that you're gonna take stuff back versus if you're just gonna donate to them whatever you don't want, then they know it's gonna go in their rescue boxes and stuff. They know they don't have to do the work of putting everything back together and sending it back to you. So they're not feeling that pressure of, oh, we should just take more of this person's stuff. So I don't know if that's true. There's no way to really prove that. Like, I don't think anyone from ThreadUp has gone on the record being like, yep, that's what we do. But I mean, that makes sense to me too. So that's why I am opting to do that $10.99 fee to get stuff sent back to me. And then, you know, if there was like a minor flaw or if it's something that maybe just that particular person who was going through the stuff and processing my box, he or she didn't like, I can just send it back in. And I've heard people talk about how they have sent stuff back into ThreadUp like three or four times before it was accepted. So I can do that. Or I mean, if something doesn't get accepted, I could just list it in my own Poshmark closet and therefore not make a waste out of that one particular item. 
So that's what I'm planning on doing. This stuff right here, I probably have to split up into two boxes because I think it's definitely over 30 pounds. And if that's the case, I'll probably wait till I go back to the consignment store storage unit again, um, because I bet this is probably like one and a half boxes. Um, I also keep really good track on a spreadsheet on Microsoft Excel of what has gone into each box and for each box, I put it in its own spreadsheet and I label that particular spreadsheet with the box number. So you'll get like a box number every time you get a shipping label for a new box. So I'll put the title or the name of that box label as the title of that particular spreadsheet. And that's how I'm going to track like when I need to go into any particular box and drop prices. And then that's also how I'll track how much I made per item because I wanna be able to keep track for you guys so that I can report back and say, this is how much I made from this one box. Um, Cause I think that that would be really fun. So that's kind of where i'm at with my thread up journey like i said many boxes have gone out many more boxes still will go out and the hope is that i will make some great passive income without having to do anything just from sending stuff in once so i'll keep you posted on how things go if you feel like you got anything out of this video or you enjoyed it please make sure that you hit that like button if you have any other tips for thread up please leave them in the comment section down below as well because i love learning from you guys and i think that even for those of you who are watching right now if you go down in the comment section and read what other people have written i think that you'll learn a lot too and finally if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing if you like thread up content because my hope is to have a lot more coming your way as well as my other regular content like thrift hauls and tips videos what sold videos all that kind of stuff so thank you guys so much i am glad that you were here to hang out with me today and i'll see you guys in the next one bye